is 9.34. Time to take a look at your Bank Holiday Monday newspapers. This is how the front pages are shaping up. The Mail, leading on the government being faced with the triple threat of strikes, the NHS backlog and the small boats dilemma. The Mirror looks specifically at the NHS with staff describing waiting times this winter as the worst on record. The Eye has a survey which reveals that Conservative voters blame the government for the hospital crisis. Guardian leading on the fury at the Minister's plans for a real terms pay cut for NHS workers. And The Telegraph covers Rishi Sunak's decision to shelve Liz Truss's child care reforms. It's time to go through the papers, have a look inside what is making the headlines uh, on the front pages and elsewhere with uh, Christopher Biggins and Claire Pearsall. Welcome back to you two. Thanks for joining us for a, a bonus edition this Monday morning. Uh, Claire, perhaps no surprise here with what you will kick off with, front page of the Daily Mail, but also front page of many of the other newspapers as well. It is the amount of problems piling up in the entry of the government. Well, that's right. It's not really any respite uh, for the government over the festive period. I think we've maybe had sort of a couple of days where none of us were talking about it. But unfortunately, the new year has dawned and the Prime Minister needs to get a grip on quite a lot of things. And I think what is striking at the moment is just how much we haven't seen him. There have been clips going out there on social media saying, Happy Christmas to everybody but nothing about what he's going to do. And I think at times of crisis, well, in, in fact, at any time, you need your prime minister to be seen. It doesn't matter if you're going to deliver good news, bad news, indifferent news. You need to be out there and you need to be seen. And that is the one thing that we haven't had. We have a prime minister that is hiding away. We have ministers who are hiding away. The only one who's been out there so far, realistically, is Ben Wallace, who was at the border. And I think this is a real problem for the government. Is he hiding away or is he getting on with the job? Because he really objected to the way uh, Boris Johnson sort of lurched from crisis to crisis and perhaps even Liz Truss in front of the cameras with not necessarily thought through policies. And his big thing, isn't it, is to kind of have this cerebral approach. I was reading over the weekend that he's he's planning a keynote speech in the coming weeks, but they haven't timetabled it yet. I mean, he, it's not as if he's skiving and off gallivanting. It sounds as though he's just trying to do a lot of the work behind the scenes before he comes forward, which maybe that's what we need. I'm sure he is. I, I don't think he is skiving off, but unfortunately you need to be out there, and especially when things are really bad. The cost of living crisis is hitting people really, really hard. The energy price cap is increasing. People are going to find it extremely difficult in the first quarter of this year. And sometimes you just need your Prime Minister to be out there. He doesn't actually have to announce anything. I think sometimes you just need to have that presence of saying, yeah, I, I am here, I am looking at this, I appreciate how difficult oh, life well, is. Not to want to labour the point, but do, do you think... Downing Street took a view that with three prime ministers last year, and I think, what was it, four chancellors, perhaps the public had just had enough of seeing well, politicians I, uh... all the time, and they thought, well, perhaps we'll just not hide them away, but we'll just not be front and centre for a short period of time. Well, I'm not sure about that, because I agree with Claire. I think the, the public do need to be reassured that there is someone there doing something, you know, because it, it, we are in a crisis, and, and, it, and it's not easy reading. Can you imagine what he feels like this morning, reading these every single newspaper that come out? I mean, he must be absolutely, well, I won't say what he should be doing, but he, he's, he's doing something. And he needs to uh, reassure that he is actually working. So if he's working on a keynote speech, come and tell us. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, there's, we are just human beings. We want to know what he's doing. Because, of course, whilst he is out of sight, Labour have been coming front and centre, haven't they? I mean, famously, since Rishi Sunak became PM, he's cut down the number of what we call the morning rounds on, yes. on the breakfast programme. Yeah. So we would usually get a minister most mornings. They've now said two to three times a week max, but Labour continue to put someone up every day. A lot of our viewers say, why are you always interviewing the shadow cabinet? Well, it's because <laughs> they're putting someone up every day and the government aren't. And where there is that void, they get that extra 15 minutes, 20 minutes discussing Labour policy, which could be spent on government policy. Absolutely. If you create that vacuum, other people are mm. going to fill it. And I think that we've seen that through every point of crisis, even through Boris Johnson's time, where he stopped ministers going out on the morning media round, and it backfired spectacularly because it does give that platform to the opposition. And it doesn't matter whether their ideas are costed or not. They can go out there and say, this is what we think, this is what we want to do. And that's what the public will hear. And in coming up to election time, as we are with local elections this year and potentially a general election in the next 12 months, 
this is the time the government needs to be front and centre, and they're just not doing it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Claire, New Year's predictions, I mean, apart from the clearly the rather depressing New Year predictions yes. that we've been going through for quite a lot of the morning, uh, what, uh, what have you got in the Daily Mail? This is irreverent predictions for the year ahead. I thought we needed a bit of levity, and uh, Dominic Lawson's column today in the Mail had some different predictions of things that may or may not happen, um, but they were just quite funny. And I thought it was quite good. Uh, so January, Harry and Meghan release a Netflix documentary complaining that the residents of California haven't been welcoming enough. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it goes on to that way. So August, President Joe Biden says he won't stand for re-election. He wants to make space for somebody with more vitality. The former President Jimmy Carter, age 96, <laughs> comes to mind. And I just, I quite like this. I think that sometimes you need a bit of levity in life. And he also goes on with the phrases he'd like to banish. Now, I think that everybody has the phrases that they absolutely hate. One of these is pre-planned or pre-prepared. And so you can't plan something after the event. Pre-prepared should be acceptable only from people with stutters. And yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> it brings you sort of forward. You think, what phrases do I absolutely hate? And the one I hate most is reaching out. Reaching out? I, I can't stand it. It's one of those. It sets my teeth on what it. What about going forward? <laughs> Um, I, I objected to wait times this morning in some of our scripts because I thought that didn't sound right. It should be waiting times. Phrases uh, you'd like to get rid of in the year ahead? Oh, I don't know. I, I find it fascinating because I always was a fan of reading my stars. And I've gone off that now. I don't oh. know. I don't read them. Do you, do you read them? No, I just say, oh, because I think you've got horoscopes as your next story. Well, well, yes, I, 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 I do. <laughs> that, I thought it was quite a good link, actually, funny enough. Um, I mean, I, I think that Russell Grant is in the uh, Daily Star double page talking about, will you be in the money? Well, it's quite a stupid question to ask. The, the, the probably answer, probably, probably not, exactly. But it's, it is interesting. I mean, from what star sign are you, Aaron? Uh, Gemini. Gemini. You see, that's an interesting combination. I mean, I'm not going to read out what it says here about you. And what about you, do you? Well, guess. What do you think I would be? Uh, Are you a Taurus? No. <laughs> I'm not remotely bullish in private life. I no. promise. I'm quite tough. Uh, only on this, uh, um, on this set. I just all pretend. I'm a Libra. I'm indecisive. Ah. Um, Claire? I'm an Aquarius. We're all different. I'm Sagittarius. Yeah. I've just had my birthday. Yeah, my Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. <laughs> you don't read them anymore, but you're bringing it up as an item. No, well, I just think it's every new year, there are every newspaper that, that prints these. And, that, and I don't know whether they're doing less of it, because I'm not aware of it. Mind you, I don't read papers, except when I'm on the show. Uh, I mean, because they're, I think they're boring, newspapers. <laughs> oh, uh, but, I mean, it, you know, it, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's interesting, though, how we change. It's a bold view for a paper reviewer to I know. Well, I mean, I, that's why I enjoy this coming in and reading the papers because you, you get a chance. But the, it, the, somehow, the reading of the papers, I, the only paper I get is the Sunday Times. Was it you, though, that once said on the show that the papers post Leveson were really dull because they didn't hack phones anymore? <laughs> that's right, absolutely. Was a lot of um, do, you, do you think people are reading less of it because there's an acceptance that it's all basically a load of nonsense? I, I, not only nonsense, but I, I think you know, to say, will you be in the money, is a stupid thing to say because we all are not not going to be in the money because we're having to pay huge amounts on extra bills and that's going to happen not only this year but next year as well. I've never understood how anyone can just assume that the, any person born in a particular month will have the same outcome. Exactly. It's just, I mean, it is stupid, really. It, it is, but it. It, I think it's, it comes under that sort of bit of fun category yeah, okay. and we all like to have a look at them and see what it says and then laugh about it and then get on with our day yeah. and it's, her, you know, it's harm nobody and I, no, I do quite like no, it. No, you're right, that's fair. But how, speaking of a bit of fun or perhaps no fun... <laughs> Dry January. You if hate dry going. January, don't well, you? Well, I, 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 you know, as I said, I've done it before, but not properly because I never made it to the 31st, and I've never done it since I've had children because that just feels too painful. Um, but uh, alcohol-free beers, they are getting better, Claire. Uh, yes, they are. And uh, I know this, uh, my husband is a, a great fan of the uh, the Guinness, the no-alcohol Guinness, and I've tasted a bit, and, and it is not bad, I have to admit. And I think if you're going to do dry January, but we still want to keep the hospitality industry going, now there are so many different drinks you can have that are not alcoholic in a pub. So you can still go and you can still enjoy it. So it might make dry January a little bit more bearable 
for everybody that you can still go out there and socialize you don't have to just sit there with a glass of water or a glass of diet coke and it goes this uh, article in the sun just runs through which ones have come out on top and which ones are rubbish and and there are so many from all of the big brands i think they've all realized now the diversification is this more and more people are going to either no alcohol at all or they're cutting down but they still want to go and, and sit with friends they still want to have something at home that is not just water or tea or coffee. It also helps to disguise the kind of peer pressure. If you've got what looks like a glass of wine in a wine glass, you're not going to have everyone going, why aren't you drinking? Yeah. You yeah. can just quietly do your own thing without all the abuse. Well, it's the taste as well, isn't it? Because it is. You can't drink a sweet drink all afternoon or all evening like Coke, but you could drink something that's bitter like a non-alcoholic beer. And also, I that's think good. what is happening now, too, the mixes are becoming much more interesting. Mm. You get really f wonderful flavoured tonics and things to go with your drink, you know. And what's that lovely uh, gin which is non-alcoholic? Which the is Minko. Yes, they're, they're yeah. terrific, I think. They're really good. Or uh, seed, oh, seed lips. Seed lips. Seed lips. That's right, yeah. seed lips. That, yeah, yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, excellent. That's and if you have a, that really does taste like gin. And if you have an interesting tonic to go with it it makes it you know something but I think you're right something in the hand you know and that, not that question why aren't you drinking because are you ill you are know? you pregnant are you yes. pregnant <laughs> no I'm not actually funny enough <laughs> <laughs> on either kind uh, right let's talk about uh, another new year phenomenon that is the new year's day dip lots of people brave enough to do that I mean this is not for me I struggle to get in the sea in the Mediterranean in the summer I don't <laughs> like getting well this, this is in Hampshire in Gosport okay. which uh, uh, you know, 400 people uh, took part in this New Year's Day. And there's a lovely picture of them all going in. Uh, 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 one woman said that she managed a few minutes in the uh, nine degrees uh, solar waters. Others lasted just a few seconds. Karen Ellis, 55, said, I wasn't as cold as I thought it would be. It was really good for the you and the soul. So I think it, I think it is rather, and I think it's fun. Look at it. Yes. 400 people going into that ocean is, is marvellous. I mean, good for your health as well. Yeah. The Wim Hof idea of you know. Do you do cold showers? I did try one actually over the festive period, thinking I'm going to be a new healthy me. I did it for about ten seconds. And I yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree. Child. It's horrible, isn't it? It is terrible. I don't know. I, I, I like the event of this. People having a good I time agree. on New Year's Day, and, and the, the people have been doing this for years and years before the advent of wild swimming, yeah. otherwise yes. known as swimming. Um, you know, which took took uh, got a lot of people involved during lockdown. This also, I mean, you look at this bit. Every shape and size and age group. It's lovely. It's yeah. a real. I like family. it, but I like it to spectate. Yeah, yes, I yes. agree. With a coffee. Yeah, yeah. With a hot yes. coffee or a hot, <laughs> or a hot toddy. toddy. Absolutely. Right. Um, the fall of Netflix begins. Is this good or is this bad? Well, this, I think this sums up, because we were just, we were talking, Claire and I were talking in our breaks today about the fact that it's now so expensive. I mean, you know, we, we both got Sky Plus and I pay £130 a month. You pay 90 You manage to bring yours down. And I think Netflix it, it is becoming, people are thinking, do we need this? You know, it's an extra expense. And they're dropping Prime, Spotify, Disney Absolutely. Plus. Absolutely, there's so Apple many TV. of them now. Paramount, yeah. they're everywhere, you know, and you can really rack up a huge bill. I mean, I understand Netflix are going to try and crack down on the amount of people sharing, sharing the same subscriptions. Yeah. Yeah. People who don't live in the same household, I'm not quite sure how. It just feels a little bit mean spirited, but probably makes good business sense. Well, I got it in the, in the hotel, uh, Netflix, through my account. So I was able to use it in the hotel Netflix. Quite right. That's yeah. Right, yeah. If you Hello, pay you once, pay you, yeah, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it is interesting how people are finding all different ways of cutting back everything because of the huge electricity bills and the gas bills that we're being forced to pay. Do you think some people will be turning away from Netflix because of Harry and Meghan? Yeah, I think there's an awful lot no. of that as well. I see, uh, no, I do. I think that you? people now oh, you can just put the two it. of them together. But having said that, it does come up with some cracking oh, series. You've got The Crown, you have yes. things like Squid Game, which I would never have watched something with subtitles previously. But I watched that. I've recently watched Treason, which is a sort of UK spy type series, which was great. And they have taken those risks and they put out such a uh, sort of variety of programming that you don't see on any other than mainstream channels. So I, I like it. I will stick with it. No, but I will too. I think that they need to not crack down on this password check. Yeah. nonsense. Yeah, if they... I think everybody knows somebody. Yeah, absolutely. No, it is, it is yeah, good television. In fact, I think you know, there are other ones that I would, I would probably get rid of. The, rather oh, than that one. And shame. Well, I think, you know, Disney, I don't think that's particularly good for a, an adult. You know, I think... Well, I got it for the Kardashians. 
Oh, yeah. Right, I think it's time to go. Disney. Yeah, let's move swiftly on the show. My kids use it. That's why I got it. That's why I got it. But I do want to see the Kardashians. It's a guilty pleasure. Anyway, um, Biggins, it's been a pleasure. Yes. Please go to bed. I You're will. You're exhausted after your time I on the show. I am exhausted. We've loved having you. Thank you for putting in that. Uh, and a happy new year to you both. Happy new year. Happy new year to you both.